Hey hello dreamers, welcome back to the world of Tana Dreams. Today I have a tutorial on how to make your digital art look more organic if you are aiming to create an illustration or design that looks less digital and more natural. Digital art gives artists a whole new realm to explore. You no longer have a charcoal pencil or a natural paper texture in front of you. You must manipulate your resources to make your art have more dimension or a real world feel to it. Here's what I mean by flat art. What you are seeing me draw here is a scarecrow prop. Notice that I'm only using a solid pin brush for the outline and then just filling inside the outlines with color. The surface of the scarecrow looks very smooth and the outlines are sleek and solid. Technically, this is not bad. This style is suitable if you were to animate the prop as there are less details to track and it would be easier to keep the other frames in model. However, if you're just going to draw the prop once as a prop design or for an illustration, you might as well go the extra mile by using techniques involving line art, layering, and texture to make the piece more interesting. My first technique for giving the piece a more natural feel is to add little imperfections. Nearly all objects in nature will have ruffles, scratches, and little imperfections, and that concept also translates into digital art. Even with a solid brush, you can create this illusion. What I am doing to the scarecrow is adding wrinkles to his clothes. The number of wrinkles is denser closer to where it would be tied together or tucked, such as his shirt getting tucked into his pants and the knot of the bow tie. A helpful tip is to add creases and indents where the clothes would bend the most, such as the elbows and the knees. I also drew small wrinkles and creases sparingly along other parts of the scarecrow's clothing. I otherwise gave the scarecrow a few blemishes on his cheeks to give the face a little texture itself. The most texture I did was towards the wood. With this method, I would say that it would not be too difficult to animate, but it may be more suitable for comics. The method is otherwise used a lot more often for backgrounds and props in 2D animations that use more solid outlines. My next technique is to use textured brushes for your line art. Using sketchier or chalkier brushes can make your piece more exciting and can give off the illusion that the piece was drawn using paper, pencils, ink, charcoal, etc. I recommend exploring the different brushes your software offers depending on whether you want something sketchier, harsher, and so on. If you use Procreate, my favorite go-to brushes for line art are Dry Ink, Ink Bleed, and Procreate Pencil. In Photoshop, I usually use Calty Webster's Inker Set. As you can see with my scarecrow, his outlines look more organic and natural than the solid pen brush. It reminds me a bit of a children's book style and simple animation. One of the elements that immediately gives the illusion of dimension is shading. At its basics, an artist needs to understand how light hits an object and casts a shadow where any light may be blocked. The three basic layers for shading are the surface, the highlight, and the shadow layer. If you want to go extra, there is also a midtone, reflected light, and cast shadow. But let's stick with the basic forms of shading for now. If you want to keep with a solid brush style for your props, that is fine, and I will show you that here. When shading, a good recommendation for digital art is to draw the light source so you have a good reference point of where the light is hitting versus where a shadow may be casted. In this case, the light source is to the scarecrow's upper left side and the right side of his body will cast the most shading. I also keep in mind his hat will shade the top half of his face along with below his belt, the hay, beneath his armpits, and I even cast some shading on his finger joints and wrinkles on his clothes. Even when only using a solid brush, the prop is starting to pop out and we are starting to see some dimension. Another big tip is to use colored shading based on the atmosphere you want to give. Since I wanted a warmer and more welcoming feeling to the piece, I used an orange shading. Highlighting is a bit trickier. You usually just add it sparingly where parts of the prop may be sleeker or where light will hit the most. I mostly put the highlights on his hat and the belt and just a tad bit on his sleeves and pants. This shading style is more cartoonish but again it is more suitable for animation and comics as it is technically easier and quicker to redraw.
This method of shading is often used to make the piece seem more realistic. That is, to use a hard brush for shading any edges, while using a soft brush to shade any curves. Here is a picture of a column. Notice that any shading below any edges are harder and crisper, while shading around the column itself is softer. This concept also translates with digital art. I used a harder shading for below the hat, hay, belt, below the arms and bow tie, creases in the clothes, and the wood. Softer shading was used for the fingers, the shirt, pants, top of the hat, and the face. My next technique to make the shading more interesting is to use textured brushes. Like line art, gritty and chalky brushes can give the shading itself a very papery and textured feel to it that also makes it look more natural. My favorite go-to brushes in Procreate are Tinderbox, Mercury, and the charcoal brushes. And again, in Photoshop, I usually use Kalti Webster's Inker Set. I still encourage you to explore your software's brushes. Texture is one of my favorite techniques in art, period. It immediately gives the piece much more interest and strength. Even if you're not doing realism, texture can make the piece feel more worldly as though it was crafted on paper. What I especially adore about texture is that there are so many different techniques to applying it. First, you make a new layer on top of the painted layer. Then, as I said, you have quite a few options. You can use a brush that is designed to be a textured brush in your software and go over that layer. Here, I experimented with most of Procreate's charcoal brushes and the noise brush. Speaking of noise, that's another method I use to create a grainier look to the layer. In Procreate, you hit the wand button, select noise, and shift to the right to add more noise. Then you can use a textured image as well. I like to take my own pictures of fabric or even use copyright free textures online. One more method I do use is a smear tool where you draw on the texture layer and then smear using the textured brush. Just be sure the darker concentrations of the texture are closer to the shading to depict where the darker values are. Last and absolutely not least, I will show the lineless style. I really adore this style, not only because of the paper cutout look it can create, but also essentially, it's one of the main methods for achieving a more realistic appearance to your art. In real life, objects don't have an outline on their edges. You rely more on texture, color, and shading for this style, so it does test your abilities as an artist. You can use lines for the details and to distinguish between features, as there are times when there is no other way. I will say that with this style, you need to be careful of the prop blending in with the background since there are no outlines to help the object pop out anymore. Keep in mind that in real life, there's a thing called camouflage. I used shading and texture to help with that, but at the end, I had to use a black shadow to help distinguish the scarecrow from the background. I will also mention that with this style, you have to be careful with pose dynamic as you don't have line variation to prevent the object from looking too stiff. So that's why I use more curves and a more dynamic line of action. I otherwise incorporated my other methods when doing this style. I used the dry ink brush and ink bleed brush to outline the shapes before filling them in. That again gives a perfectly imperfect texture to the shapes themselves. Then, I use the noise brush to not only texture the piece, but also add a gradient effect to the painted layer. I also textured with a charcoal brush and paper image. With that, here is the piece in the lineless style, and I would say that this reminds me of an illustrator style for a children's book. There we have it, my 7 techniques for making your digital art look less flat and have more real world elements to it. Here is a spectrum I created to help walk you through the different methods I used. To the left is more suitable for animation while to the right is more suitable for illustration. Please let me know what you think and if this video was helpful for you. Thank you very much for watching, I really hope you enjoyed the video. You do not have to, but it would really support the channel if you like and subscribe. 
I usually make art videos, but I also like to make content involving fairy tales and mythology. You can view more of my works in my social media links in the description. Have a wonderful rest of your day. May all your sweet dreams come true.